RPG RC. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of GGRC. I'm RC and today we're going to be doing a quick save review for Pixel Colors. Now quick save review is where I play through a portion of the game and then I give you my thoughts on it because I don't really feel like you need to finish a game to recommend a game to somebody if you're having a good time with it. Uh, but regardless, Pixel Colors is sort of a... Uh, it's a Picross game mixed with colors. It's really the only way to put it. Uh, we'll jump into it real quick here. Uh, apparently, the, the, there are characters in here. There's a very loose story about that. You can see the scientist guy back there. He created some uh, item that has drained color from things, and you're, you know, your whole quest here is to add color back to a lot of different things in the world here. So, a very loose story that you're getting here. Um, so, yeah, let's jump in. Uh, let's go into one that I've uh, already finished here. We'll do this one. Uh, we'll play it again. So when you go into these, uh, you're going to get a bar just like you do in Picross, or rather a box like you do in Picross. And uh, you're going to see that you have lots of different numbers and colors to pick from here. So, for example, if we want to put down uh, this peach color, and any color that is wrapped in a circle like that, you know that those are all going to be in a row. And since there's since there's only five spaces, we know one, two, three, four, five. And it eliminates those numbers, and boom, we know that we're making progress here. Uh, we can also tell down here that eh, one, two, three, four, five. We got five there. This is actually a very easy challenge. A lot of these five by five ones are very simple. Uh, but it's one of those games where the game gets harder as you go. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um... You can see here that we need uh, two in a row for these blues. So since we had a five across there, we, you know, eliminate the uh, possibility of blue being anywhere else. Uh, we know that these are going to be in a row as well. So gray there. And because peach is the last color left to fill in, we know that peach goes in the other places. There you go. We just cleared our first five by five puzzle. Very, very simple. Um, so uh, there are a few things that I am a little... You know, I don't want to say unhappy about with this game. You know, it's it's simple enough. I like little puzzle games like this because they pass the time. They're fun little casual things to play, you know. Um, but when you unlock a color, so for example, if we go back up and go back to the main menu here where you pick where you're going to go, um, you can see that you pick between red, orange, eventually we'll open up yellow, uh, then green, then blue, and then purple, right? Uh, so right now we only have red and orange, and depending on which one you pick, that ends up being your background while you're working uh, on your puzzles. So no matter what you pick here, it's good, there's going to be an orange background. So in the red one, if the red really hurts your eyes or it's kind of painful to look at, whatever's going on with that, uh, it doesn't matter because you're stuck with that in the background. It's a little bit irritating. Um, though I, I do like that they added in a lot of other quality of life things in here. Uh, for example, you, can, you do have the option of having a timer on while you're playing um so the timer will show up there while you're playing me personally um i like to just go at my own pace so i turn that off but you do have that as an option if you want to do time trial type stuff um you also have the ability to let the puzzle ask if you uh want a hint before you start every puzzle so if you find yourself not doing too well on these before you get accustomed to how it works it'll actually give you a hint at the beginning of every puzzle which is i'm sure helpful for uh you know kids and people who think they're not very good at the p cross style games here so we're gonna build this one really really quick get this one in the middle let's see so if that one's four I'm going to go ahead and guess that these need to be in a row here. Uh, nope, that's not right because those need to be in a row. Yeah, but there's nowhere else to put it. Hmm. Let's fill in the rest of these here and see what we can do. So that one can't go there. So that means that needs to be erased and probably put here, I would assume. So we'll put the green there, put the yellow there, and I think that may have solved our issue. Uh, no, it did not, because it's not, let's try this again, it's not four in a row, mind you. That's in a row, that's in a row. So a yellow could go here and then one there. But then we'd be pulling this one away. So that, just so you guys know, I mean, this this is what the game is. This is a 
basically adding up the numbers and the colors and making sense out of all of it. So a uh, pretty quick decision, I think, for most people, it, whether this is going to be something you find fun or not. Uh, for me, uh, I, I definitely like games like this. Okay, we know this has to go there. If it's four in a row, if it's there, then it has to go here. But yeah, I, I feel like you're going to automatically know whether you want to play this or not. Uh, just from this video and, you know... Because, uh, you know, there, there's only so many puzzle games like this, right? Uh, you know, P, P cross style games, that is. And, uh, you know, if you're one of those players who likes Picross, you're going to be one of those people that sees this and goes, Oh, cool, they have another one of those out, right? Uh, but if you're not into them, you're going to be one of those people that's like, Oh, boy, <laughs> another one of these, you know? Um, ah, where do we want to put this one? I don't know why. This one is really throwing me. It really shouldn't be, though. Five, five. Let's just let's just restart this one again. We know those are all five in a row. We're good to go on that. We know that there's, this is going to be a four in a row, so we got to figure out where this one is going to go. And it could go in any column. How about this? One, two, three, four. How about that green there and that? Wow, no, we still... What are we missing here? This is... <laughs> this is definitely not working for me. I came into this thinking like, oh yeah, this will be a real easy one to show off, but it just goes to show that these could be somewhat complicated. So if we put that there, this here... No, because then, see, then there's no place for us to put the greeny there. So this would have to be yellow. This would have to be green. That would have to be yellow. One, two. But then it can't because then it's four yellows in a row. And we know a yellow has to go there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's pull that there. Let's get rid of the four there. Let's put... Let's just try something outlandish here. Um, we know yellow goes there. Two yellows cannot be touching there. So there's that. Uh, here is three not touching. Oh, I think we got it. There we go. Wow. I'm not sure why that one took so much <laughs> brain power in my part. It's funny because a lot of these, like, I've only played this game for maybe 45 minutes or so, and none of them have been that tough yet. Uh, let's just jump into one of these... Uh, crazy rectangle ones here, the 5 by 10s which are kind of cool. Alright. So we can already tell this one's going to be a little bit of a doozy too because we got colors all over the place. So we know that if we connect those that 4 has to go there. So I'm just taking a stab in the dark here to see what's going to happen. Okay, so we know that these cannot be connected. Um... I don't understand how that's going to work. If we have three in a row, how can we have two not be... Ah. Haha. -ha. See? Deductive reasoning. That's why I like puzzle games. Figuring these things out, out loud or by yourself. Definitely helps the old noggin. At least for me it does. Uh, let's do that. Let's do... Oop. Blue there. Yeah, we haven't made anyone mad yet, so let's do that. That seems to be right. So this is going to be blue. Let's do blue. Then we have... Let's see. Blue, blue. And right now I'm just matching to the vertical and the horizontal blues that we have here to build this one. And then we have white. White. And one more white. There we go. For some reason, that one was way easier than the tiny one that we did just a second ago. Hilarious. 
Uh, that's one of the other things I wanted to point out there, too, is that one says it's a flower. A lot of the times, the things that this thing creates don't... They, you know, it's. I think it's far-fetched for what they say they are. Like, you can definitely tell that this one is a sword. Like, it's it's pretty pretty obvious. You can tell this one is a disc, right? Um, but let's see, what do we got here? This one says it's the sun. I don't know. <laughs> uh, this one is a flower. Okay, yeah, it looks like a flower. That one does look like a dollar sign, I will say that. Uh, let's go back to red here real quick. So over here, they start getting even sillier, like, you know, oh, this apparently is a happy face. Yeah, it's a smiley. What's this one? It's a star, I guess. It's kind of a star. That's a heart. Yeah, kind of a heart. Oh, this one. This one is a fish. It's tough. <laughs> it's really tough to make those out. All right, let's play through one more puzzle here, because I think you guys kind of get the, the idea here of this game. Um... Wow, the screen is so red, you can actually see it reflecting on my face from the webcam here. Pretty ridiculous. Alright, so... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Though that may not be correct. Uh, I'm just taking a stab in the dark here. And that 1 is probably going to be there. These are all going to be the 5s. And these are all going to be black. I think we ended up getting an easy one here, everybody. Get this one. And black. And boom. And what is this one? The Eiffel Tower. I guess. I don't know. I, it looks kind of like a plunger to me, but... Um, there you go, everybody. That is, uh, Pixel Colors on the Switch. Um, like I said, I don't think it's a, it's a bad game. It definitely feels like a budget title, um, but there's obviously a lot to do in it. It's actually a $12 game, so if this interests you, uh, that's how much it is on the, on the eShop. Um, I, I think for what it is, it's, it's very cool. I think, uh, maybe, maybe $10 maybe might have been a, a better sell, possibly. But as you can see that there are a ton of puzzles to do in this. You got, you know, 50, 100, 150, 200. You got 300 puzzles right off the bat. Uh, while it also gives you the option here to unlock extras. Uh, the extras I, I found so far haven't been anything, like, crazy. Um, but you can keep track of your statistics on how much you've uh, finished and what your average time is and that kind of stuff. Uh, which is kind of cool if you want to keep track of that stuff. They also have trophies to collect for you doing different things within the game. So there is sort of an achievement system as well. So like they give you a leather bookmark uh, earned for clearing any puzzle. They give you another one for clearing 10 puzzles. I guess if you keep clearing and clearing, they're going to give you more trophies. Um, so yeah, so there is a incentive to keep going with the game. Uh, this is another one of those uh, before bed games that I like uh, where... You know, it's a puzzle game that I can play a couple rounds of before I go to bed that just, like, you know, kind of uh, tire my brain out before I go to bed. And I really, really actually enjoy those types of games. But uh, regardless, uh, guys, that is Pixel Colors. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to me here on GGRC. And, of course, I will see you all next time on GGRC. See you later, everybody. GGRC.